everyone. Did you know that thyroid disorders affect 10 times more women than men? I'm Belinda Kirkpatrick. I'm a naturopath and nutritionist, and I've been working in clinical practice for over 17 years. Today, I'm going to be chatting to you about the difference between hypo and hyperthyroidism, and help us to understand a little bit more about thyroid conditions. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our new content videos when they come up. And also you can follow us on Instagram at Happy Mammoth. We always love to hear from you. So please share if you have been diagnosed with a thyroid condition and how you're currently managing it in the comments section below. So basically thyroid disease is a really common issue, as I said before, particularly among women. They say that around about 14% of Australians and 12% of Americans, so pretty close, have some kind of thyroid disease. Now this can be hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism or really commonly an autoimmune thyroidism. And they are things like um, Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune hypothyroidism or low thyroid function, or Graves' disease, which is an autoimmune hyperthyroid condition. So the thyroid's moving too quickly. So what is thyroid? thyroid disease, what does the thyroid even do? So the thyroid is a butterfly gland, um, butterfly shaped gland, I should say, not a butterfly gland, that'd be cute, that's in our neck area, and it controls so much of our body. It's often called the master control system of the body because it regulates metabolism, weight, helps with mood, temperature, hormones, periods, uh, growth, energy, sleep, so much of our body is affected by our thyroid hormones. If we've got not enough thyroid hormone being produced, then we can have an, it's what's called an underactive thyroid or hypothyroidism. If our thyroid hormone starts going crazy and releasing too much of its hormone, then that's called hyperthyroidism. So that thyroid is just going too quickly, too much kind of going on. Some of the main symptoms, um, I guess, to understand between hypo and hyper, um, I've got run you through now, but it's really important to be aware that you can sort of have hyperthyroidism but have very hypo symptoms and vice versa. So, you know, the other thing to remember is, is that whenever I tell people or people read lists of hypo and hyperthyroid symptoms, nearly everybody goes, oh my gosh, that's me, or oh my gosh, that's me. So because the thyroid does cover so much of our body and affects so many of our body systems, you know, I guess a lot of people will be like, yeah, no, that sounds like me, that sounds like me. And look, it is worth getting checked out, um, but just so that you know, most people feel like they categorize themselves into one or the other. The good thing with the thyroid, it's really easily measured. So you can get your thyroid stimulating hormone done. You can get your actual thyroid hormones tested via blood tests. They're called T3 and T4. And then if, you've, if you're suspecting an autoimmune thyroid problem, meaning your immune system is attacking the thyroid and making it either under function or over function, that's where that autoimmune element Element comes in too and that's something that can be tested. So basically hypothyroidism or hypothyroid symptoms are often associated with um, dry hair, dry skin, hair loss, um, feeling very sleepy, low energy, maybe long heavy menstrual cycles, uh, you might be putting on weight, there might be even a little bit of depression there. So it's kind of like you know like a bear hibernating, everything's on the slow, dry, cold, you know, hair falling out, everything's just slow, everything feels hard. People often say it's like they're, they're, they're walking through mud. Um, with the bowel movements, there's often constipation with hypothyroidism, whereas hyperthyroidism is often associated with anxiety, everything's basically on speed. Can't sleep, manic, losing weight, oily skin, periods might be coming quickly. You know, everything feels like it's on speed. A lot of people will say to me, oh, that sounds fantastic. Um, it's not. After you've had this hyperthyroid reaction, you often do get really kind of like depleted from that. Both of these conditions can also happen after you've had a baby. Um, so that's called postpartum thyroiditis. Often the thyroid actually goes fast and hyperthyroid, whereas in pregnancy, often it goes slow and is hypothyroid. Certainly hypothyroidism is the more common condition. And a huge amount of those, I think it's between 30 and 40% of hypothyroid cases are from autoimmune conditions. The other problems that can, or causes that can make your thyroid not too happy is if you're iodine deficient 
or you've got too much iodine. So don't just start supplementing with iodine. This needs to be tested and we need to be iodine adequate. So not low and not high. We can have that autoimmune disease, like I mentioned, where the immune system actually attacks the thyroid, which leads to either hyperthyroidism, Graves disease, or hypothyroidism, Hashimoto's disease. It can also be inflammation or bacterial infection, benign tumors or cancerous tumors. So there's lots of different things that can cause the thyroid to underfunction. And sometimes the thyroid just underfunctions and there's no real other reason to it. And that's just your classic straight up hypo or hyperthyroidism. Now, luckily there's quite a lot that we can be doing to support our body and to ensure our thyroid stays healthy, which is fantastic. Sometimes you can be doing all those things and you do still need to have medication and medical treatment. That's okay. You can still be correcting as much as you can and keeping your body as healthy as possible and supporting you know, that, that need for medication. So it's absolutely worth trying naturally, but don't be dismayed if you do need to use medication at some point. You're not a failure, these things happen. Remember, it's all about the balance and all about us trying to feel as good and healthy as possible. So foods that can help and harm. All right, so it's basically going into a really sort of healthy diet. Now, we also know though that gluten-free can be helpful. And the reason for that is that gluten and thyroid hormone are quite structurally similar and gluten antibodies can sort of trigger thyroid antibodies as well. So I definitely say to try gluten-free. Increasing your amount of vegetables and looking at pro and prebiotic foods is really important important. As we know, so much of the immune system is based in the gut and particularly these autoimmune thyroid diseases, they really do require a lot of gut health and gut support in order to get the best results. Hypothyroid often also needs to be looking at, as we said, iodine, but don't just go and supplement. Make sure it gets tested first. It's a urine test. In ingredients or minerals such as zinc and selenium. So selenium is found in Brazil nuts, so having two or three of those most days. And then zinc is found in oysters, yum, red meat, pumpkin seeds if you're vegetarian, and maybe even looking at those things supplementally as well. In terms of lifestyle, you know, we've really got to look at what's going on. Really trying to increase your your sleep, obviously that can be difficult if you're hyperthyroid, but making sure that you've got time to rest. If we're burning out our adrenal glands and pumping out adrenaline and cortisol and stress hormones, that can also negatively affect the thyroid. So it's important to know what your thyroid's doing and then be able to, I guess, you know, look, look at your lifestyle associated with that. It's really important. Some other natural kind of, you know, ways of looking at things is there are also herbs that can be prescribed for you. But as I mentioned before, really looking at your gut health. If you don't do anything else, looking at pre and probiotics, potentially some good high dose fish oils and going gluten free will be an absolutely fantastic start. Maybe throw a couple of those Brazil nuts in there as well. There really are benefits, as I said, to looking after your gut. So this collagen protein can basically help to boost your thyroid levels and unblock the thyroid gland by really helping to support that immune system from within your gut. The collagen protein, the Happy Mammoth one, which tastes great, also helps to relieve digestive issues and fix your gut. And so most thyroid diseases, as I said, have, or a lot of them have this autoimmune element and it's strongly linked to your gut bacteria and your gut microbiome. So bump up the veggies, consider that collagen protein. Let us know how you go with these um, and you can also take our personalized Happy Mammoth quiz, which is in the description below, to find out which products are going to be the best for you individually. Thanks guys, see you soon.